Good morning, Renegades. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I uh, hope you're having a fun time at, at Renegade Con. Um, my name is Matthew Teitelbaum. I'm uh, the demo, one of the demo team leads for uh, Renegade. Uh, normally, I, I go to the conventions, but here we are bringing the convention to you. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to do a little workshop today about uh, how to play board games with your family and some, some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. So uh, so here we go. So uh, my, my first uh, slide, why, why game with, with my family? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so in my life, I'm a, I'm a video game developer in my, in my real life. And uh, I've been doing it for about 20 years and I, I love video games and, and it's, it's what I grew up with and it's what I play with my kids. Um, but when we were playing, like we, we'd be playing next to each, with each other and like we would be, both be like this. We'd both uh, next to each other, look at the screen, not really interacting with one another. And it wasn't, wasn't the kind of connections I really wanted to have with my kids. I wanted to be able to really bond with them. So I was trying to figure out like, how do I, how do I make it this, make playtime be more connecting? And, uh, and I wanted something where we could like look each other in the eye and really, you know, bond. And uh, I remembered when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my first board gaming memory was uh, every time the power would go out, we, we had hurricanes back at, back in Massachusetts, uh, the power would go out, we'd have a blackout. And that's when we, we pulled out the candles and we, we pulled out a game Monopoly and we, we played it and played it and played it until you know, the candles went out or we all fell asleep because you never get to the end of Monopoly. Um, but that was, that was, we didn't play a lot of board games as a kid. And then, uh, then after that, uh, uh, my brother-in-law is actually a board game designer, and he he was he was trying to get us involved. He was he was, he was like he was telling us about Ticket to Ride and and some other games. But I I was I came from video games. I was like, no, oh, board games are nerd stuff. That's for dorks. And uh, I I didn't want to be a dork, but I don't know. I thought about it some more, and uh, and he I, I played a couple things, and I eventually you know I I made some friends that played board games. I played some board games at work. I eventually found my local game store. I found a gaming group that we meet every week. Uh, next thing I know, I'm going to conventions and, and 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 teaching board games at conventions. And it has gone from from something I, I really wasn't into, just just a ultimate passion of mine. So uh, that's how I got to board games. And the reason was is because I wanted to connect with my family. And uh, so that's. That, that's why I did. That's why I do what I do, and I hope that some of the lessons I've learned along the way, like, can can help you as you if you want to game with your family. I was, for 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 the longest time, I was. I, people would post board games of of post pictures on Facebook or, or Twitter of, of playing board games with their fam of, with their families, and uh, I was super jealous. And so I, I I've had, we've had kind of since we've been sheltering in place, we've we've kind of had a bit of a a, a revolution in our house at least, and I thought maybe I could help other people. So uh, so I'm gonna try to give you some tips that work for us. So the first thing uh, is that I that I learned how to do is uh, meet them on their turf. So my, my kids are, I don't, I don't know about you, but my kids are addicted to video games. They want to play, they want screen time all the time. And and who can blame them? Uh, they got like, they, 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 they have uh, amazing graphics, amazing sound. Like how, how am I gonna make this compete with this like it's it's really hard so so what i figured early on is there are a tremendous number of uh amazing board game apps um like uh raiders of the north sea uh there's there's ticket to ride there's Lords of Waterdeep. you can if you can get your kids involved with those that play, play those apps with them like it's it's like a little stepping stone it's like a bridge um my kids they they used to have swim lessons um and when we when they went swimming they, they they would head back to back swim lessons and the when one of them was in the pool i would we would play uh ghost splits uh, the ghost splits app or we'd play the patchwork app and we would take turns and so that was it was really just a, a time when we could i can kind of expose them to board games but it wasn't really it was pretty low pressure and and the great thing about board game apps uh, as opposed to, to board games is that you can't you can't make any invalid moves you can't every move you make is 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 within the game you can't break a rule you don't have to teach rules it's like it it's like training wheels and when you have that kind of space for them where they can't they literally can't make a mistake and play the game wrong it's 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 super helpful so um so for us yeah board game apps were a huge huge uh step um and uh it, it's it bridged the gap between the video games that they love and 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 the board games that that, that i love and was hoping to play with them so that was, that was step one the next the next thing next thing uh that uh that really that you got to think about is is finding the right games and uh for me there's there's like there's three parts of finding the right games it can be a real challenge 
but again, you're, excuse me, uh, you're, you're not going to know what's exactly going to, you're not going to know what's going to work for them. It, it's going to take some trial and error, but uh, the three biggest things that you should probably consider are duration, how long it takes, mechanisms, and uh, the theme. And um, so going into it, so duration. Now, my, I don't know about anybody else's kids, but uh, my kids have a pretty short attention span. They, uh, <laughs> they, they about a half hour is, was often their limit. So uh, after that, they start squirming in their chairs. They, they're like, I'm bored. So uh, I would recommend before you, like, don't even think about games that take longer than half an hour. Like, just don't. I would rather play two different half hour games or, or like and maybe than, than try to play one hour with one with with them because uh what tends to what tended to happen was about halfway through they would get bored and we have to put the game away and that's not fun for anybody so uh so find shorter games uh for us like we we played games like food fighters and what else we we, we played zularetto dice and uh just shorter games that, that just are, are kind of bites that are bite-sized um and uh and then if, if they enjoy those shorter games, then they, uh, th th they're going to be okay. And to, at, you can, as you go, you can, you can introduce longer and longer games. So first thing, look at the duration. The next thing, the next thing is, uh, is finding the right games and uh, finding the right games for the mechanisms for the games. And, uh, you, you find, you got to figure out what works for your kids. Uh, my kids, they find uh, dexterity games like, like flip chips here. And, uh, and, uh, we got coconuts and rhino here they, they find those games hilarious because it really like you know it doesn't take any skill like anybody can play these games so i'm as good as they are in these games and that's that's really something you want to look for is games that equalize the playing field games that where you guys where everybody at the table can can feel competent at the same level um you also want to consider our our time games stressful for my kids they hate time games and uh so so we we, we try to avoid those generally and then uh a lot of kids my kids sometimes, a lot of kids, they, they really struggle also when, when they lose. So maybe maybe competitive games aren't aren't the thing for them. Maybe you want to find more cooperative games. Maybe things like uh, Spy Club or uh, Outfox over here. Um, things that'll that that where you're all working together, so you you, you don't have that sort sort of uh, competition. Um, but yeah, you want to find things that really make it so everyone's playing kind of on the same level. And uh, finally, finally, the last part about uh, finding the right games is uh, the theme. Like theme is is huge for kids. Kids are, are playing all day long. Um, do they do they like uh, story time fantasy like My Little Pony or do, do they like building like in Minecraft or like superheroes like Power Rangers? Uh, my kids they like video games, so we uh, we have some video game themed games. We have some uh, we got they, they love the T Dragon Society novel, so uh, graphic novel, so that, that we have T Dragon game. Um, what kind you got to figure out what kinds of worlds do your kids want to play in and try to find games that kind of match up. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Also, like we, uh, when when my son was was younger, he he did a big. He, he was really big into Greek mythology and Santorini as a two player game was fantastic because all the different gods are all depicted in there and, and the art is is amazing. So, uh, so finally, so yeah, not every game you pick is gonna is gonna be a hit with your kids, that, but you'd be surprised. Um, but there's gonna be a lot of trial and error. For me, my surprise was uh, when we we started the shelter in place. Uh, um, but my daughter, we she, we found some some just abstract uh, abstract puzzly games like uh, La Boca and Dimensions, and for some reason she just loves them. But but the thing is, is she nobody like we don't like time games, so we just we just leave those those timers in the box, and it just works for us. So everything your everything's gonna work a little differently for your family, but uh, that's that's kind of that's uh, that's my advice there. So after after you've picked the games, next thing you gotta do is is you gotta you gotta bring the kids in, you gotta bring them in. And uh, give them, empower them with choice. Because if this is just something that you're you're telling your kids, hey, it's game time. This is what we're playing. This is what you're doing. No, no one wants to be told what to do. My kids certainly don't want to want to be told what to do. So you, you, you got to bring them in and uh, say, maybe maybe it's just, hey, do you want to play X or Y? Or maybe it's it's you tell them, uh, you tell them, how about here? Here's a stack of post-it notes. Put put a post-it note on anything that that you're willing to play. Or maybe it's you put games in a hat. Uh, when we started this quarantine, this is this is this is real. So this is this is cat box. I was I was actually doing a I was I was trying to call my games before before we got got stuck home, and I had a set of post notes. I said, okay, okay, Eliana, what 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 are you willing to play? And I gave her a stack of post notes, and she put post note on every single game that she wanted to play. And 
when I came back like an hour later, 90% of the games had, had post-it notes on it. So, uh, so yeah, but find something that gives them some, some agency in it so that, that they'll feel like they're, they're a part of the decision-making and they're much more willing to, to, to really give it a shot. Um, one issue that we're actually having right now is that, uh, uh, everybody wants to play different games now and we actually aren't sure we're not sure uh how to pick who gets a turn we we could draw from a hat but we all have different length games and different like i may want to play a longer game or they may want to play a shorter game and it just seems like drawing from a hat isn't isn't enough for us so if anybody has any any ideas out there we would love to hear them because we, we haven't really sorted that part out but we're with like 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 all of you we're, we're all still learning we're all still trying to figure out how to do this well <clears throat> okay, so you pick some games, you, you've given, you've empowered your, your kids with choice. You're ready to play, right? You're, you're, everything's good, right? Well, not quite. Now, here's, here's the part where you can really improve, improve the experience by, by setting the table well. And, and what do I mean? So the first thing, I, first thing you gotta do is you gotta learn the rules, right? That's the, the, the first thing. Um, uh, okay, so I, uh, but before you call kids to the table, you got you got to learn the game rules really well. No, no one likes to watch someone read a rule book, especially kids. Uh, figure out how you're going to teach the game step by step. With it. Now, there's a there's a ton of amazing resources on the internet about how to teach board games. I'm not gonna, I don't have time in this workshop to to really go into that in detail. But uh, the same principles that you would teach your friends is does just apply just as well to to kids. So some things you might want to consider are. Uh, what are the most important parts of the game to teach? Or, or is there anything that can wait a few rounds before you can teach it? Or maybe you play a practice round or two to, to get to get first to get comfortable. You're going to want to keep your teaching uh, as short as possible. The, the sooner kids are playing, the sooner they start to get it, and the sooner everyone's going to be smiling and having fun. So yeah, try to keep your teach short. Um, and in terms of teaching, uh, something we, we live streamed this a couple of weeks ago. We were playing uh, Fox in the Forest. Here's Fox in the Forest. I was playing Fox in the Forest with my son Jonah. Jonah had never played a trick-taking game before, but if you know anything about Fox the Forest, which is, it's fantastic, great, great two-player game. Um, it's, it's a trick-taking game where some of the cards have special powers. Well, so to, in order to teach him, he didn't, I had to start with trick-taking. So we played a full game of this without using any of the special powers. And that's how he learned how trick-taking. And then from there, then we could take the next step and play a game with, with the real rules, with the, with the special powers and the special scoring. So. Don't be afraid to, to, to modify things to make, make the teaching easier. Um, so that's, uh, that's the first thing about setting the table is figure out how you're going to teach the rules. Um, the next thing is, uh, is, is what, I, what I call full, full mouths, open ears. Um, and when we sit down for the table to play a board game, we pretty, we religious, we not religiously, religiously, we, uh, we have a board game snack at the table with us. We call it a board game snack. It's, it's, it's not a normal snack. It's a board game snack. Um, and, and for us, those snacks are maybe a little bit more delectable than, than we normally let, let our kids have. Um, I see it as kind of a bribe as it encourages them to come to the table when they might not otherwise want to. Um, and I'm not talking super indulgent here. I, I don't think, uh, Hey, come here. <laughs> uh, my go-tos are things like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, we, we, we do like things like chocolate covered pretzels and we have these, they're really into these Nutella sticks. You can get them at Costco. So just something that that not too messy, not too messy, but something that that keeps them, you know, the, the, their mouths shut, so you can teach them the rules and that they can get into it, and that it, it, it just uh, it's a it improves the experience. I, I definitely nothing messy. No one likes Cheeto fingers on their uh, on their on their game bits, but uh, I put out the snacks like right when I start teaching, and uh, then then the teaching makes make goes a lot smoother. So that's that's my second piece of advice for setting the table. My third piece of advice is uh, accessorize. And the way I do that is, um, how do you make the experience better? How, do you, how can you improve the experience than, than what, what, just what's in the box? And there's a couple, there's, I have a couple ideas that you, you may have more if you wanna share them in the chat, that's great. Um, but my idea is, let's see, so my kids have trouble holding a fan. So we have these, uh, these card holders. So they can hold a whole hand of cards and, and we can keep playing. Uh, kids, some games have a lot of dice. Like my kids' hands are smaller, right? They don't, they can't hold necessarily that many dice. So I, uh, I sometimes bring out dice towers. Let's see, this is the dice tower I have right now. This is, and you can, yeah, drop in the dice tower. The kids love playing with dice towers. 
Um, and then the last thing for accessorizing is actually uh, sound, because a lot of games they 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 have they they're, they're thematic. They have they have you know locate they have a location that you're in, and 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 so what you can do is there's actually this great website. I'm sure there's there's plenty of ways to do this. You could just search on YouTube. You could search whatever sound sound uh, access music access you have. But uh, there's a site called Melodice. Uh, and, and maybe we can post it in the comments, melodice.org. It's actually, you just type in the name of the game and people, users across the internet have entered in playlists of, of songs that go with that game. It's, it's amazing. The internet wows me sometimes. So like we, we were playing, I'm trying to remember, we, like for, uh, for Clank in Space that we were playing a little bit ago, like they have those space, those great space theme game, the space music. So uh, anything you could do that kind of, kind of enhance the experience and make it more of an event. Um, I think is 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 really helpful. So that's how that's how I set the table. Um, then the next thing. So after I've set the table, we're starting to play. How do I? How do we optimize for fun? And this this part's a little emotional. Um, when when my kids were little, uh, I was pretty dumb. I I played for real, and I, I didn't pull any punches, and, and I won every time. And regretfully, I I didn't stop to consider my long term goals here. Uh, I put winning ahead of making the experience of making an experience we could all enjoy together. And I know it set back their interests quite a bit. Um, no one likes getting eviscerated by the game teacher. Uh, it's just not fun. Uh, I'm not saying you should throw every game. That's, that's not what I'm saying, but, but you, only, you know, your own kids and you know what, 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 what will work for them, what won't for, what won't work, what won't work for them. Um, so maybe you consider going easy on them, put, put yourself on hard mode and, and let them go on easy mode. Maybe. Maybe that means handicapping yourself with with, uh, with certain house ruled restrictions. Um, I'm going to talk about this game, Planet X, in a second. It does an amazing job of having an easy an easy mode and a hard mode, so that different different players can play at different levels. It's fantastic. Or maybe uh, maybe you play in teams. Maybe you play teams with with your kids. Uh, uh, maybe you give them do overs. Maybe you play open handed. Uh, do practice rounds. Uh, my kids don't like like time games. Like I was saying, they. So, but we have a bunch of games that they love the mechanics. They don't like the timers. So we just leave the hour, we leave the hourglasses in the box. Um, but yeah, they, they, they love the games. They just they just don't like that added stress. Uh, now, also don't don't be afraid to add or remove rules to make the game experience better. You, you already bought the game, and the designer can't tell you how to play it anymore. So, uh, so you can it can even lead to interesting discussions about the game design. You can say, hey, wh hey, kids, why why do you think the designer put that rule in there? Why, what would happen if we got rid of it? Um, only only if they can walk away from the table with a smile on their face are they going to be more likely to come back. So that's how I optimize for fun. And and finally, uh, let's see, yeah, uh, focus focus on the positive. Um, we had a lot of trials and tribulations and. This shelter in place changed things quite a bit, but we had a hard time getting our kids playing board games. Um, there, were a lot, there were a lot of times where kids would leave in the middle of the game and it just put the game away. There was screaming and crying. Maybe, maybe the game went too long. Maybe, maybe they didn't enjoy losing. Maybe, maybe I was a little too impatient. Um, I felt miserable. They felt miserable. Many times I thought, that's it. I'm never going to play try play, playing board games with them again. And... Uh, We'd had some positive gaming experience, though. Like, positive gaming experiences, though. I emotionally, I had a lot of trouble letting that in. I, I let the negatives drown out the positives and, and got really twisted up in them. So what I learned is that I have to be more flexible with my expectations and, and really listen to, to what the kids want. Uh, they're not going to want to play what you want to play when you want to play it. No one's, no one's like that. But, uh, but, when you do, but, um, but when you do play and it works out and there are gigantic smiles on everyone's faces, Hold on to that. Sure, some, sometimes it's still going to be a train wreck, but always try to remember the good stuff. You know, if you can focus on the fun and let the rest slide, the connections and experiences you can make at the table are going to lead to closer, more loving relationships. So that's a uh, that's my that's my my, my spiel. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our favorite games. Uh, if, if anyone has any questions, that's probably a good time before before I kind of just jump in and showing you, show you my stuff. Sure. Earlier, but um, I was trying to wait till you got through some of those important yeah. points. Uh, someone did ask okay. about the gaming apps, um, if they allow 
uh, for kind of like a pass and play, or do you have to have separate um, accounts to play them? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of apps, I know the, the Raiders of the North Sea app ad, has pass and play. Um, we do, let's see, a lot of the, like we were, my kids were talking about the Onitama app has pass and play. We play, I've actually, since this quarantine started, we've been playing uh, Star Realms. Star Realms, and that actually has networked, has, has, has a network, play, has, has both pass and play and network. So my kids actually play pass and play in the car. Uh, it, it varies a lot by app, but uh, there's plenty that, that, that do both. I, I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah. Okay. So the first game I'm going to talk about since, since, uh, yeah, the first game I'm talk about, and this is a real kids game. This is, this is, oh my God, this is like one of the first games that I used to play with my kids. This is, this is, we, we call this Goblet Gobblers or Goblet on the Go. If you've ever been to a restaurant, I know we, if you've ever been to a restaurant and I, I know we all kind of forget what restaurants are, but if, uh, if, if you've ever been to a restaurant, and you have you have those placemats, and they, they have tic tac toe on them, right? And I don't know about you, I I get tired like playing tic tac toe with my kids because it's tic tac toe. But uh, we used to bring this to. I don't know if you can see this. If you can make this out, uh, this is a it's a tic tac toe variant where all the pieces they uh, they they nest in one another, and it's quick to bring out at the table, like at a restaurant. It is. Um, it's it's it, it can't get messy right it's easy and uh and just it's it fills those 10 minutes while you're waiting for food to come while you and it's uh as as a as a thing i would always say find a game that is durable that you can carry around with you when you have small children because it's going to keep them occupied while while you're waiting for food to come or while waiting for something to happen um something small something that that fits fits in a small pocket so this was this was our go-to um so that's that let's see I got let's see also as a as a great game that that was it's terms of uh, bridging I talk about bridging between apps and and physical board games something and I, I don't have a lot of room for it but we really liked and I don't know if you can find it anymore we like drop mix drop mix was great for us because if, if you haven't seen this and it, this might not be in stores anymore but it is a game with physical cards it's a game with physical cards that you place on a special uh, read a special device, and each card is a different track of a song, and so you're actually mixing music as you're playing the game. And this was it, it's it's enter it's it's entertaining as heck, and uh, the kids love it. It's it's and it, and and they loved making different mixes with music. So it was that was really great. Um, let's see. The next thing I want to talk about is so we uh, that's right. Okay, sorry moved everything around. So the other thing that you can use board games for is the mechanics in them can be like a step stepping stones, right? You can, you, they're building blocks to, you, if you learn one mechanic in one game, you, that'll help you to learn. To, if you see when you see that same mechanic in another game, um, uh, if you see that same mechanic in another game, that will, uh, that, that the, the kids will recognize it and help. Okay, okay, got it, okay. Um, sorry, I'm getting some notes from off camera. Uh, the next, so as far as those building blocks go, uh, I, mean, I talked a little bit about Outfox. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Outfox. Outfox is a cooperative deduction game for kids. This is a great game for families um, because you have a little fox. Here's the fox. And he serves, oops, he stole the pies. But you're not sure which one he is. There's 16 different foxes. So you got to figure it out. And so every, in the game, every fox has a different set of attributes and you are looking for clues and you have this cool little device that my kids fought over who's going to open the device and you put your the clue in this case we're looking for scarves and we look in and we open it up and it tells you whether or not the the thief has a scarf and then uh if you if if they do have a scarf then you can figure out oh they have a scarf and they don't have a hat or or they maybe they do have a hat and then you can you can uh you can deduce oh in this case it was arthur right because he had a scarf. Um, this kind of deduction is great. Uh, and once once my kids saw deduction, we also we played this, and then we played, uh, sorry, then we played uh, Dinosaur Tea Party, which is which is from from Restoration, and that's that's a fantastic deduction game. But it, it led us to, and I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, led us to the search for Planet X. The search for Planet X is brand new. We're actually demoing it at the con this weekend, and if you guys can you can all see this. Um, the search for Planet X is, 
It's a deduction game where you are trying to find a secret, a hidden planet in the sky, Planet X, amongst uh, lots of other celestial objects. It has an app, it has uh, little worksheets, and you, uh, you're just, you, there are certain logic rules that, that it follows, and you are trying to deduce the, play, the, the location of Planet X. The great thing about it is, is that when you, with the app, you tell it, oh, every different player can play on a different difficulty level. So maybe you're playing with, with some kids, maybe you're playing with some adults, maybe you're playing with some experienced, really amazing people that are amazing at deduction. You can all play at the same game. And, uh, and, and all the app does is it gives, it gives the, the, the younger, the, the lower levels uh, more information to start with. So you're all kind of playing at the same level. This game is fantastic. I highly recommend it. If you haven't gotten a demo of it this weekend, check it out uh, our, our demo staff is amazing and they they would love to help you out so that's uh search for planet x the next thing i want to talk about so that's that's a deduction uh the next thing that the place where we we type of a, mecha a game mechanic that we we've introduced to, the, to, to, to our kids that, that worked really well is they like deck building games uh we, we got them in the deck building games but we wanted to again. It's easier to start to start teaching these games where it's it's safe, and for us, safe is is cooperative games. So we started the deck building with the Harry Potter Hogwarts battle, right? This is a, a typical deck building game, but it's cooperative. So you are working together. You are Harry. You are Ron. You are Hermione, and you're trying to defeat Malfoy and Crab and Goyle. And we we haven't gotten far because we are we we wait to we're reading the books a little slowly, so we don't want to get too far ahead. But this was a great way to introduce uh, uh, deck building to the kids. And once we did that, then we could, once once we have you know, cooperative deck building under our belt, then, well, my assistants helped me out here, uh, then we could play something like Clank in Space. And Clank in Space is, is great. If you haven't played Clank, any Clanks, uh, for me, Space is my favorite. Um, in Clank in Space, you are, are bounty hunters. I think you're bounty hunters. You're you're going on. You're, you sneak onto a spaceship. You are trying to avoid Lord Eradicus, and I think that's him there. Trying to avoid Lord, Lord Eradicus and steal some treasure and get out without making any noise. And it uses deck building to do that. It uses with those cards. You're going to be defeating monsters. You're going to be walking through the ship. Maybe you'll have to get a, a, a telepad pass. Maybe you'll have to to hack some terminals. Um, but Clank in Space is fantastic. And again, this is this is how the building blocks work, right? You start with a simpler game with the same mechanic, and then you get to be, you can go advance to maybe a more, more complex game. So as that goes, um, the next kind of game that I want to talk about. So I've talked about deduction games. I've talked a little bit about deck building games. And if you don't know what these these genres are, if you're, you're, you're new, uh, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. But the next kind of game that I want to talk about is legacy games. I don't know if you're familiar with legacy games. Legacy games are fantastic. What legacy games are is every time you open the you, you open the box, every time you play a new game of it, you're going to get some new mechanics. Maybe there's be a, there's going to be an envelope to open. Maybe there's going to be a, a box with new components. Maybe there's a new mechanic. Maybe, maybe you have to tear up some cards. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds there's the people out there like you know gasping. I I get it. I get it. I I, I was not ready for it either, but. Um, it's that anticipation of finding something new in the box is just, it's palpable. And it really, I wanted to share that with my kids. So the first, the first uh, uh, legacy game that I introduced them to when, when we started this uh, shelter place, that, that we, uh, I introduced them to was Zombie Kids Evolution. I cannot speak highly enough for kids, for, for parents that want to get their kids into gaming. This game is amazing. What this game does, it's a cooperative game. It takes about 15 minutes and it's a legacy game. I don't know any other game on the market that is doing what this game does in terms of introducing new gamers to the hobby. Because my kid, like we could play this while dinner's cooking, we could finish a game of this. While like we they would just come back. My kids would 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 they'd ask me, they, my daughter would wake me up early. Hey, can we, can we play zombie kids evolution? So, so we can, we can beat this one challenge. And it's like, yeah. And I, I didn't recognize this person that was waking me up in the morning to do this. It was, it was crazy. So if you want to get your kids started with legacy games, this, this is an amazing place to start. So from there, we actually, the next uh, ugh, legacy game that we're in the middle of right now is we're actually in the middle of Machi Koro legacy, which is, it's, 
it's probably a next step up. It's it's we we had played a little bit of Machi Koro. Machi Koro is a is a town building game with dice. It's it's kind of you, you roll the dice and you get stuff based on uh, on 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 what you roll. It's it's interesting. Um, but the legacy component, the legacy part of this is pretty interesting as it adds new mechanics as you go. And now now that once once we've had once we've had some legacy, they've had some legacy games that they're not so scared about ripping up cards anymore. They've had some deck building games and some deck building games so that they know how to play deck building games that way. And I'm really excited about this. Come on. Come on. Sorry, my helper here. Oh my God. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully soon. If you guys can't see this, can you see that? This is Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. This came out last year. This is the most amazing legacy game that there is right now. This is, we, I've started this, uh, we started a, a campaign of this at my work, at my office, uh, before we sheltered in place. Now we're all working from home. So we're only about halfway through the campaign, but I, I loved it so much. I got a copy to, to play with my family. Um, this is, it takes the, the components of deck building and the components of legacy and mashes them up. And it's hilarious. If you are looking for, for a new Clank experience, if you're looking for just a load of laughs, if you're just looking for something, just it's, it, the way this is constructed is, is amazing. So I cannot recommend Clank Legacy highly enough. And so those are, those are the games that I play. I'm actually gonna bring my son on at this point, and maybe my daughter, I guess. And uh, we, we, maybe we could do some Q&A with them. Oh, wait, oh, we got some questions. Yeah, we, we do we'll have do a question. Uh, actually, Terry is joining us in chat. So hello, Terry. Um, hey, Terry. And she is asking, do you have any tips for playing with siblings of different ages? And what te techniques have worked best for success with the sibling dynamics? OK, siblings of different ages. Um, yeah, so really young kids like it's when kids are really young it's that that it, it feels like the the their difference in ability is really big so we we struggle a lot finding games that that kind of fit both ages okay that uh that fit both ages um but let's see i i would definitely always lean on cooperative games for for if if the the, the if they're young and the ages the the range is is, is a little broad um Let's see. What we often do is, uh, my, my, my son is 11, my daughter's eight. So I'll, I'll often be on a team with one of either my, myself or my, my, me or my, my, I or my wife will be on a team with my daughter and, uh, and, and my son will play alone. So we'll, we'll play three player, but I'll be, I'll be on a team with, with my daughter who's, who's eight. Um, so those are, that's, that's some of what we do, but specific games. Oh man. For, I don't know. Do you, do you want to do? Okay. Are there any more questions in chat or. Uh, sorry, I my, think we're good right now. Okay, my, my, my guest host just stepped stepped out. So, uh, so whew, that's amazing timing. Um, do you want to come on? Into, okay, can I ask you questions about your favorite games? Okay, <laughs> this is my daughter, Eliana. Hi. Hi there. You, so so what, what, what are your favorite games? Machi Cora Legacy. Machi Cora Legacy. Why, why do you like it so much? It's a deck builder game, and you get to open new things every time and not so, like every time yet. <laughs> okay okay a lot. okay and what 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 board of gaming apps are you playing um star realms and, star realms and, okay i forget the other name you forget the other name yeah okay uh so, sorry my uh my my co-host co has returned kids sometimes have perfect timing uh okay hi. can you guys that's okay that's 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 good and this is this is my son jonah hi, hi there hi everybody Hi. <laughs> uh, what, what sort of games do you, do you like to play? Uh, uh, trick-taking games. You like trick-taking games, like Fox uh, and Forest? Yeah. yeah. Um, I like, uh, I like, uh, I like some detection games. I like a lot, I like lots of different games equally, but some games I like a lot more. Like, um, I like deck builders or like, or like somewhat luck-based games like Machi Koro. There's still a strategy or like, what to buy with the money that you earn in the game, but like it's still very fun because mm -hmm. it's an, it's like Dad said, and it's a pretty equal playing field. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, legacy games are pretty fun, except when it's like everyone is winning, except mm -hmm. one person because like there's multiple games and stuff keeps getting added mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it gets kind of hard to keep track and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also like Jack Builders a lot. Yeah, yep, yep. 
Are there any are there any board game apps that, that we've been playing that, that, that you like? Onitama uh, a lot because A, it's yeah. a very simple game and B, the graphics are pretty are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And C, uh, the uh, great thing about it is that you don't even need to pass to play mm-hmm. if you're doing local multiplayer because like it's actually a special way. It like one side of the board is on one side of the screen and the other is on the other. That's good Meaning point. that you can just play, being like the board section is in the middle of the screen and like the cards are on one side for one of the players. And so you don't even need to move to move to change who's holding it. You just need to set it in between the two people who are playing and then it's very easy to do it. Okay. Yeah. So, so while we've, uh, so both of you, while we've been sheltering in place, what's been your favorite gaming experience that we've had? Cause Machi Coralice. So Machi Coralice. <laughs> okay. Zombie Kids is pretty fun though too. What's that? Like, what? Zombie Kids. Zombie Kids. Fun, okay. Like, zombie Kids is pretty fun. Okay. <laughs> now I'm sure people are going to ask what, what's your favorite board gaming snack? Nutella. Nutella. Jinx. They love the Nutella. Okay. Jinx, jinx. Uh, so, okay. so wait, hey kids, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. So when we get out of when we start when we get out of the house and we can start seeing friends again, uh, are there any uh, tabletop ga- top, tabletop games you you're well, excited to play with people? Dungeons and Dragons, obviously. Dungeons and Dragons. We've been kind of forced to uh, do it online, and it's a little harder because because uh, we can't really point out things. We can like click, and then like it, it emits a pulse, but you can't really like show. I want to move this guy here or whatever mm-hmm. stuff like that. And not really. Anything. Not really. Not really. Games with friends. <laughs> games are really. just a family thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, lastly, are there are there any video games that you're playing that are, are similar to board games that you'd uh, recommend? Um, some video games are like turn-based strategy games that can be similar to board games, but like some games are even more similar, like uh, Slay the Spire. Uh, yeah, we're big fans of Slay the Spire. Time. Wait, where are you going? What are you doing? Where are you going? I, I, you, don't, you don't need to show okay, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's like, it's like Sorry. a deck building video game where like you get cards that can do that you can do to deal damage to your enemies, and like you, sometimes you can gain trash cards from enemies being dealing damage, and then they just fill up your deck, so you're less likely to draw your good cards and mm-hmm. stuff. It's mm-hmm. very, it's very cool. Okay. Do you, do you think if someone played Slay the Spire, they'd be more likely to want to want to play board games? Uh, it kind of depends. Obviously, they'd be they'd probably be more likely to play, um, to play deck builders, but maybe they would like other card based games because they like understand what the cards do. Like, Danny, there's like a picture on the top middle, like the name up on the top, etc. That way, they understand how to read it. Okay. So that's uh. That, that, that's uh those are my questions is there any more questions in uh the chat or yeah any, any actually thoughts? there is a question for uh your guest hosts um okay are there kind yeah, of also oh. um sorry hold on it does talking sorry, uh, sorry. are there to... are there kinds of components you really like like miniatures or storybooks or oh. any different components that are your favorites are there are there any components that are your favorite components so uh, so maybe some of them are here right we have like um, like components like like component like yeah, oh yeah, the slide track and potion explosion is very it. fun to use. Yeah, like, t- 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 explain what it is. Explain how it works. In potion bit. explosion, you try to get these little marbles that represent potion okay, ingredients. Don't, don't look at the game. Look, yeah, at, look uh, at the people. And you and you get them by taking them out of this out of the out of the slide track dispenser. There's five rows, and like you can take and you can take a marble out of the rows, and the rows are slanted so that the other marbles slide in and if a marble hits another marble of the same color then you get to take all of those um the entire row of marbles that are the same color that hit each other so it can be very useful like it's very fun to like get a chain reaction where like like boing yee boing yee and then you get the entire row it's just so satisfying yeah so what's your favorite game component uh, I also no, like oh, Fireball Island. Oh, Fireball! Oh, yeah, we have Fireball. Yeah, yeah this was also a big hit. So, yeah, so it works. Really big... So I didn't, I didn't touch on this very much. I should probably touch on this more. Uh, games with a big toy factor. So yeah. it's almost like it's almost like games masquerading as toys. Um, that uh, that in this game that they're, they're all the different. There's a plastic board. There's marbles that roll around. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Yeah, this is for from restorations. So, 
Yeah, the kids love it. It's company. you know it's, they restore old games. They restore like, old games. Uh, yeah. Like stop the mm -hmm. that game. Yeah. I forget the um, what that what that racing game yeah. is called. Yeah, Stop Thief was good because it also had an app. It, yeah. for, for us, the kids. It's pretty the, cool. Like it makes different sound effects, and you have to deduce where the thief is, and then you try to win by yeah. choosing who it is and get the most money by not calling the cops in the wrong space, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts about components that you like? <laughs> you like what? <laughs> I like the ones Jonah said. You like the ones Jonah said. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Also, like uh, for uh, for like the adults who are trying to get their kids into mm -hmm. board games, mm -hmm. uh, some some board games are inspired by video games, and some <laughs> and some video games are inspired by board games. Uh, like Eliana. Yeah, I need to. It's okay. He's good. Like he's good Monopoly point. Monopoly gamer. It's uh, like a normal game of Monopoly, but like it's in, this one is a Mario theme. There's like. For like Mario Kart themes and stuff, and like different characters, and, okay. the, and like all the board and all the pieces are like inspired by Mario. The places that you can own mm -hmm. are inspired by Mario, uh, and like and different characters have different powers. Like Mario can get extra coins. Like Bowser, I'm pretty sure can steal coins or easier mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that. It's very, it's very cool. Yeah. So, so I'm not saying mm -hmm. Monopoly is the greatest game, and I'm, I'm, I'm not dogging on Monopoly. But if you find a game that has a theme that you know that your mm -hmm. your folk your kids are gonna you know jive with that they're gonna connect with then yeah bring it out you know there's even this like 8-bit console aka oh yes console mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, uh, you don't need to you, you, yeah, you don't need to show all the like games three, to everybody it's like three uh board, ga <laughs> Sorry. Three board games that are <laughs> okay. heavily yeah, inspired no they're on the, on the, extremely on the heavily inspired by video games you even like have like a like you even have like a like a joystick thing mm -hmm. that yep, you can yep. actually and then like everyone moves and stuff. It's mm -hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, any answer? Uh, uh, that, that, that can I answer it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, and there's not too many questions. I think there's a discussion now, like in chat, as far as like different board games they suggest, and um, some. Uh, let's see, uh, Witty Pan is, has said we. Uh, they also love games like Doctor Eureka and Bubble Tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh yeah, bubble tea's yeah. great. I, I don't have that, but it, I remember, yeah, the I like the the, the translucent the transparent cards of where you're, you're making puzzles. Of course, we don't have bubble tea. We don't even know how to make it. No, we don't What's know how to make bubble, bubble tea. What's yes. bubble tea? Okay. What's bubble tea? It's a game. It's a game you haven't seen yet. Yeah. It's also it. a drink. What it is? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, but as far as questions, I think that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. But you 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 all have started a, a fun discussion about what which yeah. games to try. Yeah, and if, if anyone has any questions or any 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 suggestions, yeah, feel free to hit me up. I'm on I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm, I, I, I tweet sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm titled on Twitter. And if anyone has any questions, uh, find me find me online. Find me at a convention. I'm I'm always happy to, to answer questions about games. Mm -hmm. So, is that, is that is that what we got? Is yeah, that, I I think so. Uh, cool. Yeah, that that's pretty much it for questions that I can yeah. see. Questions. Excellent. Excellent. Well, th th thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, thanks for, for staying with us. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope you find 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 ways to find uh, put gaming in, into 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 your uh, into your family activities. So thanks. <laughs>